If you're watching us live, you know it was a gorgeous, warm spring day out there today. So nice. And what a contrast to the snow and ice storm we had about two and a half months ago. There's a new report out on how Multnomah County did in terms of shelters during that storm. Remember how they closed them while the bitter cold and icy conditions still continued? Well, that report is our big story tonight. Multnomah County Chair Jessica Vega Peterson asked her employees to hammer out an after action report looking at what went right and what went wrong during the big ice storm in mid January. It's not exactly an unbiased review from an outside consultant, but they do give a nod to a couple of obvious things that the rest of us saw. So in my opinion, the report is valuable because it at least lets us know that they know that the system for gathering volunteers and the metrics for closing the shelters needs to get a lot better. All right, here's the cover page. It certainly looks cold and stark, and it was. Remember the high winds and the lows in the 30s? The county opened 12 emergency shelters for folks living out on the streets and kept them open for five nights. The report points out they also helped expand two other shelter locations and pivoted to opening three distribution points when they closed the shelters too soon and kicked everyone out into the cold. They didn't write that, but that is what happened. In the lovely bureaucratic language of the county, the report states, despite numerous successes and the ability to support the community during this long event, opportunities for improvement were also identified and questions arose regarding the final closure time and date. And a bit lower down, it states, the event was also an opportunity for further learning and improvement in the way the county prepared for and responds to seasonal emergencies. I love that language. Now, at the time, at least a couple of county commissioners were pretty frustrated with the county chair and the COO for making the decision to shut down the shelters at least a day too soon. Here's what Commissioner Sharon Myron told me back then. I, I thought it was um, abhorrent. <laughs> How come? I, I mean, for so many reasons, the, bot the bottom line is just from a common sense human standpoint of thinking about people who are most vulnerable in our community, who are getting respite and warmth and shelter from the storm. And you're basically kicking them out into the ice and cold. And that, to me, that just shocks my conscience. Okay, so now the county's had time to reflect on what went right and wrong. What went right? Well, people used the shelters. 1,300 people stayed over three nights. That's a 19% increase over the old record. 3,500 different shifts were filled by workers. That's double the old record. And 1,200 people worked those various shifts. That's a 50% increase from before. Okay, nice, good work, everyone. Now, here are some of the opportunities for growth. Number one, expand support from partners during large scale shelter operations. Yeah, bring in more people. Use fewer locations that are bigger. Identify and train shelter staff year round. Flexible planning when forecasts change. Now, I don't know how much it costs to produce that report, but I gotta tell you, I hope it wasn't much because it was so obvious what needed to be fixed that I spelled it out for free to county leaders way back in mid January. But here is another question I've been thinking about. Why is it that every time we have a snowstorm or an ice storm like this, it feels like the very first time our county has ever experienced it? I mean, I sort of want to issue a warning right now. We're going to have some really hot days this summer. Hopefully you'll start to give a little planning thought to that. <laughs> this should not be new, you guys. Why is there not a template that someone can pull off a shelf and say, oh, ice storm? Okay, yes, here we are. Here's all the shelters that we use. Here's all the staff that have been notified that part of their job is working in a shelter if needed. Here's a list of people who have other lists of people who have volunteered. Let's put it in action right now. Seems pretty simple. Folks, we have 803,000 people living in Multnomah County. Is it crazy to think that we could get two or 3,000 trained up and ready to volunteer every winter for the homeless emergency shelters? I don't think so. And if we had that in place, it would be no big deal to keep the shelters going until the snow and ice melted, which is common sense. By the way, the heat is still coming. I hope you're ready. I emailed the county to see how they're going to implement the findings in their report. A spokeswoman said, actually, two points had already been put into action. 
During a February storm, the county planned for it to last longer than it did, and they had the staffing and supplies geared up for that longer time. Another recommendation was to keep security at the emergency shelters, so they did that during the February storm. They also did talk to the city of Portland about working with each other better during these storms. However, no word on year-round recruiting and training of volunteers.